Monday and Thursday. Are you gone on Monday and Thursday for any reason? You don't want to miss Monday and Thursday. If you can't do this lesson today, you have no chance at Monday and Thursday next week. But once we do Monday and Thursday next week, that is like the pinnacle of our studies. That's like as hard as it gets. Everything after that gets slightly easier, okay? So if you make it through Monday and Thursday next week, you're like, oh, great, I figured this out. I can then figure anything else out. We are doing an introduction to what we call complex analysis. And uh, today we want to convert uh, complex numbers into what we call trigonometric form. A complex number is of the form A plus BI. We want to put that into a different form, okay? But A plus BI, if you would consider this, okay, suppose that I asked you to graph the number negative 3 on a number line, okay? Haley's like, no big deal. I could graph negative 3 on the number line. I'm just going to make a number line. I'm going to plot 0, and I'm going to go back 3 units, and that's negative 3. Well, what about negative 3 plus 5i? That's a complex number. Where does that fit on the number line? And it doesn't fit on the real number line. You need what we refer to as the complex plane. The complex plane has a real axis and an imaginary axis, which together makes up the complex plane. This is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis. And so plotting these complex numbers is pretty straightforward and simple. Okay? All we need to do is when we want to graph z sub 1 right here, we're going to go over 2 and up 4. So I go over 2, and I go up 4, and I put a dot there, and then I connect the dot back to the origin, and that is the graph of 2 plus 4i. No dumb questions today, so please make sure that you ask if you, if you need help, but that's pretty straightforward, right? We're all good there? If we go to z sub 2, notice that z sub 2 is negative 1 minus 5i. So we're going to go back one and down one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> and that is the graph of z sub 2. Why did you go back down five? Because it's negative one minus five by. <laughs> now I'm going to graph z sub 1 plus z sub 2. So if I would do z sub 1 plus z sub 2, I have to add these two together. We've learned how to add complex numbers. You simply add the real parts to get 1, and you add the imaginary parts to get negative i. So from a geometrical perspective, it's, it's interesting that if you add the red and the green, to, or red and the blue together, you end up with the purple. <coughs> That's what you get. <coughs> This says negative z sub i, I mean for negative z sub 1. Anybody want to guess how we compute negative z sub 1? I simply distribute negative 1 to both the 2 and the 4. So I get negative 2 minus 4i. And we can graph that. We will simply go back 2 and down 4. And we get that purple graph. Wait, so what did you just do to get that? So see how there's a negative sign in front of z sub 1? So I take z sub 1, I multiply by a negative 1. Okay. Does that make sense? Good, so we've got that. And our last one will be 1 half z sub 1. And 1 half z sub 1 is equal to, well, that's just half of those values, so 1 plus 2i. So I will go over 1 and up 2. And notice how it relates to the original z sub 1. It's the same direction, same type of line. It's just half the length. Everybody okay with graphing those complex numbers? It definitely gets more difficult from here, but I will say that probably about a fourth of students get that wrong on the test. And it's because their mind gets so bogged down with everything else. Or if I ask you to graph something, make sure you get it in the correct quadrant. Okay? Maddie Gago? You have fun. Check on uh, Maggie for us. Okay. The second thing we want to do today is we want to determine what the modulus is. And the modulus of a complex number is the absolute value of that complex number. Well, how do we take the absolute value of A plus B I? 
So <clears throat> we're gonna do, this is not challenging, but we're gonna do a little bit of thinking about it. If we were talking to a child that was in second grade and they didn't understand absolute value, um, what would you tell them absolute value means? How far it is from zero. How far it is from zero, the distance from zero. We always say that a distance is positive. So we're gonna say in this situation, and I'm gonna erase these, okay? And uh, I'm going to say, well, suppose we had A plus B I. Suppose we're located right there, A plus B I. Well, if I am over A units, and if I'm up B units, anybody want to think of how I can figure out how far this is from the origin? Pythagorean theorem. So, again, the modulus is simply the distance that this is from the origin. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if you're asked to find the modulus of a uh, number, you simply just take the absolute value of, we have 2 plus 4i. And that is going to be the square root of, 2 squared is 4, and 4 squared is 16. And I get the square root of 20. Where's the i go? Yeah. There is no i used in the process. As you notice, this is a squared plus b squared. You ignore the i when you compute this. Okay. And the square root of 20 is 2 roots of 5. Is 2 technically z1 and then? Four eyes technically Z2. Four. No, 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 no. Like, so Z1 and Z2, we're going to do Z2 now. Oh, so Z2 no. is negative 1 plus 5i, or minus 5i, excuse me. Right? Isn't that what's written up above? Yeah. Yeah. So negative 1 minus 5i. So in our computation, we never include the i. We have the square root of negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 5 squared is 1. 25. So we get the root of 26, which cannot be simplified. So our two basic skills for today are finding the modulus and being able to graph them. Is everybody okay with those two? Okay, so we move to the back page, and our goal is to be able to get through this problem here, the negative 2i. Okay. Hey, welcome back. How'd it go? I could go. Oh, I'm sorry. Just can't do it. It's all right. Um, I would have let you. Yeah. Had that happen to a lot of students. Send me down. Yeah, it's like within like three months. I'm so sweet and pink. Sweet and It's all the formulas I need to know for the ACT. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, would that, yeah that? would that be a problem? Would that work? Like if, if I had like a sick tattoo, just it, every like, formula I just needed like to know. Look at it, like, or would yeah. they cover it? They, they would make sure it's covered. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Make you, Laser That's commitment to the bit right there. So in these three problems that we do, we need to teach you how to now turn complex form into what we refer to as trigonometric form. If you can't do this come Monday or Thursday, you will not be able to do Monday or Thursday's lesson at all. This is important. Tell the person next to you the possibility of you not doing your homework over the weekend and not learning this. Go, talk, talk. We cooked. Fail your test, not know how to do anything. Take the L. And it's percent chance Yikes. Courtney, give me a percent here, okay? Somewhere between zero and 100. Percent chance that you don't do this assignment by the time Monday rolls around. That I don't do it? That you don't do it. 15. Yeah. So you're 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 saying you are, I'm going to do it. Okay. Good. 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 It's just that risk. I just try to be clear. If you put this one off, this could really, really, really hurt you. Because Monday and Thursday are gonna be hard. Okay.
After you get through those, it starts to get easier, but you've got to know how to do these. So here's my example. So suppose that we have uh, Miss Haley here, and she's helping out some, sec or some uh, seventh graders in mathematics, and she wants to teach a, a one kid to do 2x plus 6 is equal to 14, and he can't do that. Okay, can't do that. And the, the lesson the next day is not to do that, but to do 3 times 4 minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 4 fifths times x minus 6 plus 5. Does he have a shot at all of doing that? Wouldn't you agree he should not even be in the classroom that day? That, like, we got to get him out of the classroom, have him sit down with Haley, and learn how to just do that first. That's what that's like next week. If you don't know how to do this, then next week, that's pointless. You, I mean, it's just, it's going to be a disaster. So please make sure that um, over the course of the next couple of days that you do look this one up. Otherwise, it'll be ugly. So let's turn it into trig form. If I think about trigonometry and I think about A plus BI, we already talked about this coordinate here being A plus BI. I know that I move over A units and I know I move up B units. We already have that established. But there's a trigonometric connection here as well. After all, this is called a trigonometry class. And trigonometry has to do with right triangles. And trigonometry has to do with angles like theta and radius values, which in this case we know is also the absolute value of z. Those two happen to be the same. So let's turn this into trigonometric form. Who can tell me which trigonometric function has to do with these three things right there? Cosine. cosine. So we're going to write that the cosine of theta is equal to side A divided by R. Now, what I find interesting about that is that the complex number has an A value in it. So I can solve for A here. R times the cosine of theta is equal to A. Great. I will eventually be able to take that and drop it right in for A right there with a the substitution. Can somebody tell me what trig function has to do with these three things? Yeah. Theta, B, and R, I have sine. Sine of theta is equal to B divided by R. I notice in that little trig expression that I have a B value pop up, and that sits right there. So I multiply both sides by R, I get R sine of theta is equal to B. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that right in for B. So I've gotten rid of A and B, and in place I'm going to put those things I've written down. So I have a new formula, R times the cosine of theta plus r times the sine of theta times i. That is one way of writing the trigonometric form. It's not the cleanest way. We like to clean it up a little bit. First of all, we're going to factor out an r, and we'll write cosine of theta plus, and instead of sine times i, some people might get confused about this i being part of the angle, we like to write i in front, so i sine of theta. That's trigonometric form of a complex number. That doesn't look very user-friendly, but I'm going to tell you, this makes the world a whole lot easier moving forward. A whole lot easier. And you'll see that on Monday and Thursday. So let's put the thinking together. You guys be the geniuses here. You tell me, if I want to take this and turn it into that, I'm going to need a formula for R. What would be a formula for R? which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's how we figure out what r is. Hey, we're halfway there. Now we just have to figure out theta. Well, theta, let's see. If I'm talking about a, b, and theta, which trig function has to do with a, b, and theta? Tangent. We know that the tangent of theta is equal to b divided by a. And those are the only two things that I need in order to figure out trigonometric form. And that's not complicated. You know how to deal with tangent, and you know how to deal with the square root of a squared plus b squared. So although it's new, it's not super difficult, let's make good use of it. Three examples, and that will wrap this up and head you into your weekend. 
Write the following complex numbers in trigonometric form. If you see that direction, it's r times the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. That is our task. So we're going to find r and we're going to find theta. By the way, when we do this, some of you may notice some patterns. Uh, let your brain go down that path because there's some very useful patterns here. R, I do the square root of what? A plus B, so it's going to be 4 plus 4. Now I get the square root of 8, which is 2 roots of 2. That was pretty nice, wasn't it? Yes. Now let's find theta. We just set up tangent of theta is equal to what? What is B over A? 2 over 2, which is 1. We know how to do that. We just solved sine or we just solved trigonometric equations yesterday, didn't we? Where is tangent positive? First and third. First and third quadrant. Talk with the person next to you. Are we talking about the first quadrant for this or the third quadrant for this problem? Talk. What? Which quadrant are we talking about? Why? Go figure it out. Look at it. Examine it. <laughs> First quadrant, and the reason why is if you were to graph 2 plus 2i, we would go over 2 and we go up 2 and we'd end up in that first quadrant. So again, I give this test and people are not getting the right quadrant. Know which quadrant it's in. You just graph it. That's all you have to do. Okay, so I inverse 1 on my calculator. What do you get when you do tangent inverse of 1? To grab that calculator, you go ahead, girl. 45 degrees. I should have known that. It's okay. That yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Don't want to assume we all remember it. And we don't get to um, label the the angle as a degree. In 7.6, we always label them in radians. So theta is equal to what is 45 degrees in radians? Pi over four. So our answer for this problem is 2 roots of 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. I wrote a 2 there. Sorry about that. We'll drop that. There we go. That's the biggest piece I want you to be able to do today is that type of problem. I just got lost at, like, the theta part. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Agree that's in the first quadrant? If you do tangent inverse of 1 on your calculator, you get 45 degrees. Yep. 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4. Mm -hmm. So then I just put the pi over 4 wherever you see theta, and you put the r value up front. Okay. Okay? See if that works for the next one for you. We've got two more examples here. You guys are doing a great job. Do you not substitute the cosine of pi over 4 and all that? Like, Just keep going and just like put in what we know as our cosine of... 45 degrees. You know what I'm saying? Like, because this cosine is. So, cosine of pi over 4 is the root of 2 over 2, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I like what you're thinking. Pause till I get to example 3. I'll kind of show what, what you would be doing in that process. Okay? Uh, so, you're, you're right. Just hold that thought. We'll come back to that. Okay. This one I got to come up with R. I got the square root of what's A squared? 9. Nine. And what do I get if I square three roots of three? If I square three roots of three, what do you get? Why do you get 27? Three squared is nine times the root of three squared is three. Multiply those, I get 27. What's nine plus 27? So I get? I get six. So that's my R value. Now I'll try to come up with my tangent value. Tangent of theta is equal to B. Again, I don't include the I. Never include the I in these operations. That's just something that tells you is the imaginary part. You don't actually make use of it in a numerical way. I divide by negative 3, and notice you get negative root of 3. Where is tangent negative? 2 and 4. Are we talking about the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant? How come? Yeah, you graph, you go back three and then up three roots of three. So it's definitely in the second quadrant, not the fourth quadrant. 
Everybody has memorized this, including the Girl Scout. What is tangent inverse of the root of three? 60. 60. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we we'll put a 60 here. What would then be the angle in degrees first? In degrees first, we're going to go back 60 from 180 to get 120 degrees. And then what is 120 in radians? Not 1 pi over 3, but 2 pi over 3. And 180 would be 3 pi over 3. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. Now let's go ahead and put that together to place it into trigonometric form. We have 6 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. So you just leave it at that? Yes. So the next week, I'm guessing we're going to solve for it, or what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me, next week's a heck of a lot more complicated oh. than that. I'm going to show you what happens if you go a step further, okay? Oh, okay. I'm going to show you what happens when you go a step further. Hey guys, don't be too worried. Be too worried about next week. Okay, I, I've seen a lot of classes go through this process, and you guys are highly qualified. So, so if you just focus and stay the course, I think you're gonna be okay. What makes this last one different than the others? Uh, no yeah, so it's yeah. it's really zero, isn't it? Zero minus two i. And so if I find r, I do the square root of yeah. zero plus. 4, and I get the square root of 4, which is dos, which is Spanish for 2. Yeah, sorry, I, I always, put my, chair. I I always put my foot up there. And then I find theta. Tangent of theta is equal to, what's 2 divided by 0? Undefined. Can tangent be undefined? Where is tangent undefined? 90 and 270. 270. Is this 90 or 270? 270. 270, because you're over 0 and you're down 2i. So oh. we're 270. So theta is 270 degrees. What is 270 in radians? 90 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. So my answer is 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i sine of 3 pi over 2. And that's that. But there's two pieces I want to show you to connect with what you've been asking about and to help everybody see uh, something that's going to save you time as well. So let's go further and solve that thing. Watch what happens. You have two times. What is the cosine or the x value at 3 pi over 2? Zero. Zero. Plus, what is the y value at 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. So negative 1 times i is negative i. Let's distribute the 2. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times negative i is negative 2i. What did we get? What we started with. So... We, we, went from, we went from complex form to trigonometric form, and if you do that, you go back to complex form. So you can always check your answer. So if you say going further, you would be checking your answer. You should always come up with what you have. Okay. Now, the cooler part, I want you guys to know that I never would have done the problem like that when I was in high school. I might have done the others like that from time to time, but I never would have done that one. Here's what I would have done. And I think that this is a good option. I think a lot of you will connect with this. And maybe somebody already saw this. But uh, if we've got negative 2i, I recognize that that is located right there, isn't it? What's that angle? 270. 270, right? You could just see it. And what's the distance from there? 2. So you could just be like, oh, yeah, I know it right away. Like, we don't even need to set up our formulas because we know it's 3 pi over 2 and 2 because we see the visual. So anytime you can visualize it, things are pretty good. That, that kind of connect a little bit? Good. Okay, take out your homework.
so we can show you uh, uh, kind of what's in store for you. So, I made a mistake. Some students have chosen to forgive me, others have not. Okay, but the fact is, if you look at your assignment, it says Demondre's Theorem. That's what we're doing on Monday. So, if you flip it to the next one, it says nth roots of complex numbers. That's what we do on Thursday. So, if you flip it again, then it says trigonometric form of complex numbers. I just stapled them in the wrong order. That's what we do today. Now, by the time class is over, which is just about seven minutes, my guess is you could probably get through almost the whole first page. All you're doing is plotting the number and then finding the modulus or the absolute value. If you go to the back side, there is where you are placing them into trigonometric form. Okay? I have for you answer keys posted up right here. When I give the MCA in my class, uh, so like when people come to my class from on Monday and stuff, they take down my answer keys. So they were all just shoved back there. So I'm just trying to sort through and get them back up. But those are up there. I don't know if I'll be able to get them up online over the weekend. Um, I'm, I'm always stretched eighth hour. Then finally, um, I did make some good copies up here because people had asked. I do have a full ACT test if you want one. I have a math ACT. And then I have a math ACT that has all the ex answers explained it back. So I've got a few extra copies. And uh, uh, go ahead if you want to take one. There's no pressure, but the stuff is up there. So should we put a, should we put a, uh, we haven't put a phrase in the video for a while. Should we try to reward these people who are gone? Yeah. What's the, what's the key word that they got to say? We'll do it off one of our videos. What was 60. our video? 60. 60? Or should we do... Charlie bit my finger. Or we could do formula tattoo. Formula <laughs> tattoo. Or we could do, uh, what was the other video we watched? We watched the grape. Grapes. <laughs> grapes. Oh, wow, she's actually hurt. <laughs> Just do the noise she made. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your best description of the noise. It doesn't matter if you're the first one. Uh, it's just the most accurate. Yeah. yeah. So a series of O's and H's. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> um, if you uh, respond to me, Charlie bit my finger, we'll go ahead and give you a treat on Monday. So anybody watch it, Charlie bit my finger. There you go.